Hi folks, thank you for joining me. You might remember in the earlier part of the year, I traded my Supro Tremo Verb amplifier in for a guitar. I wanted something affordable that I could take her into the streets and play for the public. We call it busking in the UK, where you just, I'll lean against a tree in the meadows and play my guitar along to backing tracks and hope that some kind person might throw me a pound now and again. So I was getting a bit apprehensive about constantly taking out my Gibsons and my dream guitars. So if I get clobbered over the head and somebody makes off with this, I'll be a wee bit more comfortable um, about that than losing one of my dream guitars. So more about this in a minute, but let's first of all hear it with all three positions through a clean amp. So we'll put it through the Cornell, almost clean. Then we'll try one with a bit of light overdrive. Then we'll maybe hear it in the context of a mix. And then it might be helpful to compare it to its closest um, cousin. This is my Gibson ES335 with a VOS finish. So this is a dream guitar for me and I'm getting apprehensive taking this out into the streets. Anyway, let's do the first clip. So what do you think? Well, I'll tell you what I think. And remember, part of my brain is muddled because I part of me doesn't want it to be anywhere near as good as the guitars I've already got. Because if it is as good as the guitars I've got, well, then I look like a prize idiot for spending my life going into debt and buying guitars that I couldn't afford. Um, so there you go. So I kind of need it to be nowhere near as good as the guitars I've got. So <laughs> forgive... Forgive me for um, my thinking being a bit muddled, but it, it plays great, it sounds great. I knew it would though, with a construction like this, all semi hollow guitars tend to sound really quite nice. So it plays great, it sounds great, tuning is great. I lowered the action a little bit and fettled with the intonation. That's all I really did. I'm not noticing any sticking at the nut. The tuning pegs work great. Um, it's a nice weight. It's not quite as heavy as my 335. I've not weighed it yet, but I'm going to guess this is eight pounds maybe so it, it, it's 
got heft, but it's not, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, and I love the look of it. It's a handsome, a very handsome beast. I love this royal tan finish. Things that I don't like, there's really nothing I don't like, except that I like worn VOS and relic and aged finishes. So all this shiny stuff kind of wouldn't be my cup of tea. It's all shiny. I can I don't know if it'll ever dull down like nickel. This will be more like chrome, I would imagine. But that's just a personal thing. And of course, what can you expect on a £650 guitar? You're not going to get aged hardware. This toggle switch, when you put it back to the neutral or sort of the middle position, it's a bit noisy and abrupt. The ones on my custom shop guitars tend to be a bit more damped, maybe. But that's not a fault. The pots work really good. With that lovely between 8 and 10 you get that lovely whoa a lot's happened that you get on expensive audio taper pots so they don't seem to have scrimped on the pots and the switch works perfectly well it's just a kind of noisy affair one thing that maybe isn't quite as good when certain frets are a bit could do with an extra polish of course they could the guitar costs 650 pounds but it's not rough frets and the fret ends are lovely this is all lovely it's just the actual polishing of the frets. Maybe I'm noticing when I when I do vibrato, I'm hearing things that I don't normally hear on the Oswald and the Gibsons and the Fender. Um, but they are, you know, hugely more expensive. That's the only negative thing I can think of it. The tuning pegs, they don't feel like Rolls Royce. They feel fine. They work brilliantly, but there's a lightness to the physical button that maybe you get more heft from the other guitars in the room. But that's that's all I can say. The guitar is brilliant, man. £650. It's really, really good. I'm really impressed. The, the nut, the pickups, the pots. Absolutely great. Let's hear it with a bit of light overdrive from the Tone City Kaffir line. <laughs> it in the context of a track.
Now before I put this to bed, let's compare the two beasts. Um, we'll just do tip for tat. All the pickup choices will mirror each other just to see if I am a prize fool and could have saved myself thousands and thousands of pounds over the years by buying Epiphone. <laughs> Who's a silly boy then? No, I love my guitars. I love my uh, custom shop guitars. There's a feeling like you're in a Rolls Royce when you're playing them. I don't regret it, but I'm extremely impressed with the uh, Epiphone here. What can I say? It's really, really good. I'm really impressed. Let's do a comparison. So to wrap up, firstly, thank you very much to Chris from Guitar Guitar. He's the manager there and gave me a good deal on the trade in between the Supro and the Epiphone. Uh, and secondly, check out the YouTube channel from the Guitaristas. I'm going through their back catalogue just now of YouTube videos and they do really thorough reviews of guitars and they do a particularly good one of this Epiphone. What is it called anyway? Is it a Rivera or Riviera? A Rivera? I don't know what this is even called now, I've forgotten. They do a particularly good review of it, uh, comparing it to relevant things like the casino and stuff. So check out their YouTube review of the Epiphone Riviera. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you very much for tuning in.